for me. So your wife is a part of your household, right? So you are over the things that she's doing, right? So you have to guide her according to this Bible, according to the word, right? Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him. That this is speaking about Abraham. You know who Abraham is? Right, come on. That he will command his children and his household. Wait, what will Abraham do? Command his children and his household. Right, so Abraham was a friend of God, right? Abraham was proven by God. Abraham was 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 given a commission, right? And he displayed his faith by his works. Right? He set his house in order. That's what I'm telling you right now. Right? So do you think Abraham, knowing that his wife shouldn't work on the Sabbath, would allow his wife to work? He probably would try to make some arrangements, right? To 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 to, to prevent his wife from breaking God's commandments. That's what you're commissioned to do as a man being the head of your household, right? So I'm not sure of all the details of your situation, but I'm sure that you could make provisions to have your wife be off on Saturday in the future. That's what you need to do according to the Bible. You have to command your house just like our forefathers. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, was that it? All right, finish that. He will command his children and his household after him. So his children too. So your children's not exempt. That's all under you. When you understand in the order of a house. All right? Come on. And his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Right. So we have to keep the ways of the Lord so that us ourselves, you understand what I'm saying? So that us ourselves aren't disqualified. Because I become what if I'm teaching you to do something and I myself ain't doing it? What do I become? A liar, right? What else? A hypocrite. You understand what a hypocrite is? Right? So we got to make sure that our houses are in order so that we can command others. I'm, I'm not useful to my nation if my house is out of order. Right? I can't teach my people. I can't come out here and try to teach y'all and to build y'all up with a clear conscience if I know I myself, my wife, is working on the Sabbath day when she should be off of work. You understand what I'm saying? So you have to get your household in order so that you can be of service to your people. Right? Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, where we were. Uh, you can read it from the top. Come on. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Come on. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Nothing. Come on. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant. Right, so even when you got people come up, sometimes you got family that visit you, right? They come to your house, you and your family, y'all not uh, uh, going to the store to pick up any groceries, to make lunch. Why? Because you keep the Sabbath day, you made preparations beforehand, right? We'll get into that. On the Sabbath day, it's no buying, no selling either, right? No business, did you know that? You knew that too, okay, good, good. So on the Sabbath day, no buying, no selling. So you might have some, some family come to your house, come visit you, right? If they come visit you at your house and they get hungry, and let's say they have a taste for some pizza, right? Are you going to allow them to go out, purchase pizza, bring it back to your house? Say it again? Yeah, unfortunately. You said yes, unfortunately? It's your house, though. It's your house. I don't think you understand what we read about Abraham. The Bible said that Abraham was going to do what to his house? He's going to put it in order. He's going to command it, right? So what you allow and disallow in your house, that's up to you. So you're going to be held accountable for the things that happen within your household. So if you have family over your house, they need to abide by the rules that you establish, right. by the rules that you set up. You don't just allow them to do what they want because they're family, right? Abraham commanded his house. So if he had family members that didn't want to get in order, right, at his house on the Sabbath day, they had to leave. They weren't going to abide there. If they wanted to do that foolishness, that's on them. But they're not going to, I'm not going to allow it to be done under my watch. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the same way you have to command your household. So when the Bible says that neither your, 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 uh, read that part again. The book of Exodus, 
chapter 20 and verse 10. Where, where it's going into your your uh, your manservant and your, and your ox and all. I want that from the top. Yes, sir. Come on. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter. These are all a part of your household, right? Come on. Thy manservant. Your manservant. So this could be uh, a visitor, a strange, so, someone, uh, a distant family member. You understand what I'm saying? Who's coming to assist you, right? You're, you're allowing them to stay with you for a period of time. They're a stranger or a man servant within your house, right, for the time being. Come on. No, thy man servant. Or, or, or woman that come, right? They, they also need to keep God's commandments when they're abiding in a godly household. And you're commanding that as the man over that house. Read on. No, thy cattle, no, thy stranger that is within thy gates. Right, so strangers as well, right? Strangers, men servants and maid servants, they're more going into actual servants, right? Back in these days and times, we had we had our custom was for you to come work for me for a period of time and I would pay you and I'll provide your living. We don't have too much of that going on right now, right? Which is why I, I a better connection is strangers, right? It's visitors, it's family members, it's things like we deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. And we struggle with that thing. And a lot of times we fail at, 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 at representing and standing up for God when we need to the most, right? Because the Bible says that we're the salt of the earth, right? Get that for me in uh Matthew chapter five. Right? So what that means is 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 other people, when they see the life that you live, right? And 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 how it's, you're being changed into this new man, how beneficial it is for you, for you and your family, they should desire to have that, right? That's you being that salt of the earth. Read what you got. This is the book of Matthew, chapter five and verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Right, so the Bible says that you're the salt of the earth, right? But what makes you the salt when you're keeping God's commandments? That's the salt. That's that flavor. That's right. right? Without God's commandments, you're like salt that's not salty. Have you ever tasted that before? No. That's like eating some sand or something. You, would you put that on your food to make it? No, you wouldn't put that on your food and make it taste good. Right? But you're supposed to be that salt. You're supposed to add that flavor to everything. Thus saith the Lord. Read on. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? What you going to do with that? It's not good for nothing, right? That's how most of us are today. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. We're the greatest thing to ever walk on this earth, right? But we live in the ghettos, right? We live in, 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 in the, in the we, we are given the worst uh, health care. We're given the worst loans. We're given uh, the worst housing, right? But we're the salt of the earth. We're supposed to be God's greatest gift to this world. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? But we've lost our flavor because we're not keeping God's commandments, right? We're afraid to set our houses in order, right? We're afraid what our family might think. We're afraid what our wives might think, right? We're scared, right? We don't trust in the Lord fully. But the Bible says that we need to trust in God. And if we do, he will not forsake us. He's not going to let us down. This, this is our safety net right here, this Bible. But we have to apply the things that it tells us to do. If we don't apply God's commandments, then what, what good is it going to be for us for us to know it? It's not going to be good for us at all. Finish on. It is that for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Right. Get uh, James chapter 1 verse 20. Right. A lot of things that we're reading right now, we're teaching you... We're teaching you right now how to get the kingdom of God, all right? But you have to apply the things that you're learning. Now, did the brother already teach you the law on the beard? Yeah, he's making something about it. What did he tell you? You're not supposed to shave it. You're not supposed to shave it, right. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. Okay. James chapter 1, verse 20. The book of James chapter 1, verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness and in grace. Verse, verse 22. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the word. Hold on, what does the Bible say? But be ye doers of the word. What's that mean? Be a doer of the word. Do, do, do what the law says. But I'm asking you things that you already know. Yeah. But you're not doing them. Come on. And not hearers only. And not what? Hearers 
only. Right. So a lot of times you'll get people to pull up and just listen to what we're teaching because it sounds good and they agree it's positive, right? We used to hearing negative things. We used to hearing brothers talking about how they gonna take my girlfriend, right? These are the things we're used to hearing and we're okay with it. So when someone hears something about, oh, a brother should love his neighbor, a brother shouldn't hate his sister, right? People stop, that catches their attention. They hear it, they listen to it. But the Bible says you can't just be a hearer of the word. When you read the Bible, right? You're interpreting it. You hear it, you might read it out loud to yourself and, and, and you're processing it, but if you don't apply the things that you're learning, how is it gonna profit you? How is it gonna profit you? Right, come on. Verse 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Wait a minute, who are you deceiving? Deceiving your own self. So the Bible says that you're deceiving yourself, right? You're deceiving yourself when you hear the word and you don't apply it. You hear, you hear the Bible tell you, I shouldn't shave my beard off. I hear the Bible telling me that. I shouldn't shave my, shave my beard off. But somehow you go to the Bible, the barber shop and then you ask the guy to give you a haircut. You get your haircut at the barber shop? What you tell the barber how you want your haircut? Uh, a little bit lower on top. What about your face? No, I don't want him to do that. Who does your face? You do it? Okay, so in the morning you wake up, you put the shaving cream on, how you shave your face? Pretty much like it is right now. You use the shaving cream or the clippers or what? Yep, shaving cream and razor. Shaving cream and, shaving cream and razor. So the Bible says, don't you, don't shave your face. You understand? You read the Bible, you understand that. But then you go home, you wake up in the morning and you put the shaving cream on, right? Do you have to shave your face for your job? No. So why do you do it? Sometimes it really bothers me. It really bothers you. Uh, and it gets really bad. I want the Bible dictionary. Officer Jonathan, when you get a chance, I want the Bible dictionary, all right? And I want beard in the Bible dictionary, all right? Read that again. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For right, so the Bible says, be a hearer of the word. You understand? And not just a what? No be, no, be a doer of the word. I'm sorry. And not just a what? Excuse me there. Right, right. <laughs> you was paying attention. That's good. So you need to be a what of the word? A doer. A doer. A doer of the word. And when you're not a doer of the things that you're hearing, who are you deceiving? You're tricking yourself, right? Into thinking you got a little bit more time. But guess what? The sky might crack. And when it does, you out of what? You out of time. What you gonna do then? All right. Read what you got. This is beard, all right, in the Bible dictionary. This is what the, this is a Bible dictionary, right? A Bible dictionary, right? It's gonna help you understand what the significance of a beard is for a man, all right? Read. The definition of beard, a badge of manly dignity. No, a badge of womanly dignity. A badge of manly dignity. You understand that separates you from being a woman. Your beard. Right? The the most high God allows you to grow that thing. You know what's women that take hormone pills just so that they can manipulate their body to produce a little bit of facial hair so that they have a beard? You understand that? But the most high God gave a beard to who? Men. Right? But what do we do? We destroy it. That's like spitting in the Lord's face. You understand? Every time you shave your beard. You say, I don't want to keep this badge of what? Manly dignity. I don't want to keep that badge of manly dignity, right? I'm too womanly for that. You understand? That's what you're telling the Lord. That's too masculine for me, right? I want something else. That's what you're telling the Lord. Read on. As a sign of mourning, it was the custom to pluck it out or cut it off. Right. As a sign of mourning, it was a custom to do that, right? But guess what? You're understanding today that you come from the tribe of Judah. This isn't a time of mourning for you. This is a time of rejoicing because right. you're understanding who you are according to the Bible. Right. So moving forward, you gotta stop shaving your beard off, right? Acts chapter three. Moving forward, that's it. Moving forward, you gotta stop shaving your beard off, right? This is what repentance is. Repentance to who? The children of Israel. Right. The people that you see on that sign. Read. This is the book of Acts. 
Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Be what? Converted. Right. So the laws of God is what's going to convert you. Right. So you applying the scriptures, not just hearing it. I can I can teach this stuff to you all day long. Right. But if as soon as we're done and we shut down camp, you go back to living your life. I see you next week and you just shaved your beard again. Right. How is this going to profit you? It's not going to profit you. Right. So what's going to convert you is you keeping the commandments that you read in the Bible. You making some changes to set some things in order. Now, it might not happen overnight. That's OK. It didn't happen overnight for any of the brothers that you see out here. But we apply a little bit at a time and we apply some more and we apply some more. We apply some more. Eventually, we got to the point where now we can start to help some brothers with some things that we've overcome. You understand what I'm saying? what I'm doing. Good, good. My family, they don't eat pork anymore. They don't eat shellfish anymore. No pork, no shellfish. They don't celebrate Christmas anymore. Good. Good, good. Those things are good, right? You're leading by example. You have to continue to do that. You have to continue to lead by example, but you can't do it all by yourself, right? Leviticus chapter 23. You can't do it all by yourself because there's also another part of the Sabbath day, right, that we did not cover. And I want you to tell me what that is. It's something that we're required to do. We're supposed to teach. We're supposed to teach? Uh, what's that called? Preaching. Preaching. Well, before we teach, what do we need to do? We need to study. What did we do before we came out here to teach? Study. We came together. That's what we need to do. Right. So that's what you need to Are you congregating with anyone? Right. So you need to congregate. Right? There's certain levels of the laws that you're gonna that you're not gonna understand. You're not gonna be able to apply. You're not gonna see the value, the significance until you get with the group of people and y'all start to build together. Right? There's a dynamic that's there that that you're going to that you're not privileged to right now. Right? Because you're not. You, you, it's your privilege, but you're not taking advantage of it right now. Right? Read what you got. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse one. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these so are the, So the Bible says, read that part again, that these are holy what? To be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Right, so a convocation, right, That the root word of that is to convoke, to come together. It's a gathering. So before anything, the Sabbath is a convocation. It's a, a holy day where brothers and sisters come together, right? To do what? To keep God's commandments. So we'll be coming together to not buy and sell. We'll be coming together to teach the people. We'll be coming together, right, to, to, to not cook, right? To enjoy the food that was prepared beforehand. We'll be coming together to do those things. But if I'm doing it by myself, I'm not fully in the spirit like the Lord tells me to be. Read on. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. So the Bible says that the Sabbath is a what? Holy convocation. It's a holy convocation. So you can't forget that, chapter Hebrews. You can't forget that the, the, that the Sabbath day is a holy convocation, right? I need you to remember that thing, right? So when you go home today, you need to write it down. Right? I have to keep the Sabbath holy by gathering with my brothers and my sisters. Read what you got. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking. The, not what? Not forsaking. You understand what forsaking is? For If you forsake something, that means you leave off. You leave off from it. Right? So don't do that. Right now, right now you're being edified because you're with a group of brothers that's, that came together. You understand? That's right. You're with a group of brothers that came together. Don't forsake that. Right? So next week, you need to also be with a group of brothers that come together in the spirit of the law. Right. Read on. Verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So we have to do this. The day is approaching. You know what day that is? Nope. You don't know what day that is? What, what are you talking about? The day. Read that part again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
but exhorting one another, and so much the more. So we're exhorting one another, we're keeping God's commandments, we're coming together, we're getting ourselves right, we're repenting, come on. As ye see the day approaching. As ye see the day approaching. What day is that? The day approaching. Saturday is the Sabbath day, but this day is actually talking about the day of the Lord, right? We're coming together, we're keeping God's commandments because we understand that time is getting short. The time is getting short. That's what I thought you were talking about. That's why I said, I don't know. Okay. I don't know when it's it's okay not to know. That day, we don't know when the day right, is, right. right? But the day that it's talking about is whatever day, because Christ don't even know what, what day is going to happen. That's right. Whatever day, the Lord say, all right, time is up. Get Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, right? The day that it's talking about is the day that the Lord says, all right, it's time for me to shut this down, right? It's time for all of this to get shut down. I'm restoring my people. Today is the day that they get vengeance. You understand what I'm saying? We don't know what day that's going to be. But if you out in the spirit, then you're going to be destroyed along with all the rest of God's enemies. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Read that. This is the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom. The, the gospel is that you need to keep the commandments. The gospel is that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. The gospel is that you need to keep the Sabbath holy by not buying and selling, coming together with your brothers and sisters on the Sabbath day. The, the gospel is setting your house in order, right? The gospel is that the nation of Israel is, is special to God called to be above everybody that's upon the face of this earth. Right. That's the gospel according to God. The gospel is that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the Israelites. That's, right. that's the gospel according to the Bible, right? Does the world know this? Yeah, they know. The, the whole world knows this? You sure? Not the individual. Not the whole world know that Christ looks like that right there? Not the individual people, but the people who actually are pulling the strings, they know. The people they know. pulling the strings? I'm talking about the people that need to know. Oh, no. The people that's out here in the ghettos, do no, they know that? No. no, they don't. Read what you got. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. This is the gospel, right? What we're teaching is the gospel. Come on. In all the world. This gospel got to go to the whole world. It got to go to the four corners of the earth. Everywhere. The Israelites thought this gospel got to go there. Right? That's why we're teaching in different countries. We're setting up in different continents. You understand? The same message is being preached. The same signs that you see today. The time is getting short. That's what we're trying to tell you. The time is getting short. Because you're standing out here right now. A few years ago, you probably didn't have this gospel so readily available to you. As it is right now. You can go on YouTube. It's thousands of videos teaching the exact same thing. Read on. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. And then the end will come. This gospel is going out everywhere right now. So we understand that the end is coming quickly. You got to stop breaking God's commandments. You got to stop doing that. You know what the scriptures say. You know what the Bible say, right? You got a flyer. What's the address on the back of the flyer? Right down the street. It's right down. You live here? You live in Hampton, but it's right down the street. Right right over that bridge right there. That's where it is. Right over there. It's on 23rd Street. Right across from the police station. So we should see you next week, right? We should see you today. Right? That's right. You got time today to come to the school? You don't have time today. What about next week? I should. You should. You should make time to come keep the Sabbath day. That's right. You understand? Joshua 24, 15. Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. That's what I want. That's it. Uh, choose ye this day Yep, I think that's it So brother, you gotta decide what you gonna do You understand? If your family's gonna get in order It's not gonna be until you do it You can't wait on them to do it with you You understand? You gotta do it And whether they do it or not That's gonna be up to the Lord But you gotta set yourself in order So that you can have a system set up for your family to follow. Right. Without that, you just talking, bro. You just talking about things that you heard. That's all you're doing. Read. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. And if it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. Right. If, is this an evil thing? What we teaching right now? It's not. It's a good thing. Read on. Choose you 
this day. The Bible says, choose you your family. Choose you this day. The Bible says, what you gonna do? I'm talking to you right now. I'm talking to you right now, right? Your family might not be able to make it today. That's okay. What are you gonna do? You're the man of your house, right? You set up above everybody. You've been commissioned. You've been given that authority. That's God given. Can't nobody take that away from you. As long as you live on this earth, that's your household. Read on. Choose you this day whom ye will serve. Come on. Whether the gods which your father served. That, are you going to continue to break the Sabbath day? To shave your beard? To allow your wife to work on the Sabbath day? Right? That's worshiping other gods. That's idolatry that you're in the midst of. Right? Are you going to continue to be in the midst of that? Come on. That were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What did Joshua say? But as for me and my house. So Joshua said, as for me first, and for my house that I'm over. What do what, what you think he say he going to do? Come on. We will serve the Lord. He said, look, I'm going to serve the Lord and my family going to do it too. Bring it out. That's what he said. I'm going to serve the Lord and my family is going to do it too. Right? He didn't ask his family, is this something y'all want to do? Right. You understand what I'm saying? He said, this is what they're going to do. Right. If they chose not to do it, they was going to get put to death. If not now, then later. You understand? That's the same spirit that you got to roll in if you're going to be a leader and you can't do it by yourself. You need other brothers that's setting their houses in order right along with you. Everything is against you right now. There's nothing in this world that's teaching you how to effectively build your family up. Right. There's nothing doing that. You need other examples of other brothers that's applying the commandments that we read about in this Bible in order to do that. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.